This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. Hello and welcome to Dialogue. I'm Xu Qingdu. Nepal, a beautiful country and a close neighbor with China, is currently experiencing a crucial period of a political and economic transition. But the new initiatives like the China-Nepal cross-border railway project pose new possibilities for the landlocked South Asian nation. What are the opportunities and challenges that lie ahead? How might such cooperation change trade and even bilateral relations between the two countries? How can Nepal better engage with the world through the ongoing China International Import Expo? Today, I'm very honored to talk with Bishnu Pukka Shrestha, Nepali ambassador to China, for his views on these important topics. Welcome to Dialogue, uh, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, we know that the China International Import Expo is being held in Shanghai. So, uh, what Nepal is showcasing in this forum? Thank you very much. You know, this is a very important uh, event because of the restrictions of this pandemic. Uh, this year, we are not having so many showcases, but uh, it has a very you know important role even then. You know, through media and other parts, they will also understand about it because the media certainly will carry out this events very uh, beautifully i think so it will also help our traders and businessmen uh, just to understand about the importance of this expo in fact uh, this is a very uh, important uh, and biggest expo uh, in the international level not only in china's national level but in international level too so i think it will have a a uh, very important response from all over the world. I have thought it like that. Mm -hmm. um, Ambassador, we know that uh, Nepal is an important destination for international tourists. Uh, so what would you say to those uh, potential tourists who probably know uh, not much about Nepal? Yeah, you know, Nepal is a beautiful country, naturally very, very beautiful country. Because the, the, the geography is in the, on the upper side, there is snow-capped Himalayas all the years, you know. When you go near to the hills, you can see the snow-capped mountains always. The first thing. The second thing is the, in the middle, there is a hill area, you know, just covered by green forests. Different kinds of rivers are there, you know. Uh, and all the times you can see those rivers with uh, clean water. Huh? You can have a rafting in, the, in those rivers. Uh, white water rafting, which people used to say. So they can also enjoy in different other activities. And not only just being the, to see the natural scenes, but they can enjoy different things and they can have an opportunity to see the one, one horned rhino uh, at, the, at the same time, Nepal is a country of temples. They can visit the temples, uh, as well as the, they can also visit the different kinds of people, you know. Because Nepal is, a, is small in area, but there are 125 ethnic groups. They have different languages. They have different kinds of culture. So the people of the world, if they come to see the people, to see the nature, and if you go to the uh, southern part, there is plain lands, just uh, thought, uh, you know, uh, having neighbored with India. At the same time, Nepal is the birthplace of uh, Sakyamuni Buddha. You know? Buddhism has been spread from, uh, from there, and that is one of the most important destinations for the tourists mm -hmm. to visit. So, uh, in this way, there are a number of things, you know, there is a living goddess, in Kathmandu Valley, they can they can see and understand about the culture over there. There are different kinds of festivals. I think most most of the places they have peculiar type of festivals too. So 
uh, Nepal, Nepalese people I think are more you know, hospitable to, to me. <laughs> it may not be, you know, it may not be own praise, but people used to say that uh, Nepalese people are hospitable. So that's why, you know, Nepal is a place having scenic beauty with snow-capped Himalayas, beautiful rivers, hospitable people, and different places just to see, you know, the peculiar things. Just I, I say the one on rhino is in Nepal, mm -hmm. you know. So there are tigers, there are elephants, so many animals in other parts of the world, but not the rhino, you know, like in Nepal. So uh, this is, uh, I think, a very important uh, destination for the tourists. Uh, and uh, the, it should be one of the lifetime experience for every tourist if they want uh, to visit, if they go to visit Nepal. Yeah, a lot to enjoy and to take a look. Uh, well, you know, back to the uh, CIIE, you know, the first, uh, the world's first actually, uh, import themed exhibition uh, hosted by China. What do you think of this, um, you know, the theme and also, you know, China hosting this such an event? Yes, indeed, it is a beautiful theme, you know, import themed. So, uh, I have learned that the more than, more than 2900, you know, uh, producers or products were uh, showcased in the last uh, 2021 CIA, you know. And this year also I have uh, got an information that more than 300 uh, Fortune 500 companies are taking part in this expo. So this import theme, that means uh, there are two things that we have to understand. The first thing is uh, China is being open to all of the world. So every product of the world can be imported to China and the China is ready to import it. That is one message to the, to the people of the world. The second thing is you know, the people, with, uh, the China is providing a, a very good platform just to showcase the products, you know, their, their products, so that they can get uh, uh, a bigger market. They can have a connection with the traders, businessmen, like this, you know. So it has opened up to the products, to the producers, as well as it is, it is uh, China has given a message to the whole world that we are, we are uh, importing things. We can import uh, your products. You know, China is ready to import the products. So that's why this, uh, this theme is very important and uh, very timely uh, you know, quoted, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, against the background of the retreat of globalization, or some would say deglobalization, so this message probably means more uh, in such a time, basically filled with uh, you know, multiple crises. Uh, China, as the second largest economy, remains open to the world, welcome you know, products and services from other countries coming to China. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that means uh, not only to the developed world, the developing world. So that's a, that's a very important move to probably a push for the continuous globalization. Yeah, in one sense it is, uh, it is good, you know, because uh, it is, uh, everything has been globalized in this in, in this century, you know, because of the development of science and technology, all of the people of the world has been connected to each other. And so if you don't like, even though this process of globalization is not good, it doesn't matter, because it has already been connected, you know, because of the uh, communication. Uh, but at the same time, the people, you know, the people of the world, in some parts of, some people of the world and some rulers of the world, <laughs> let me speak strongly, some rulers of the world, uh, just giving the uh, slogan of globalization are in favor of a deglobalization too, all right? But this is not the issue that we are going to talk now. But this, this kind of uh, expo will bring the people of all of the world to understand each other, to know each other, to know the products, to know the you know uh, usefulness of the products they have just showcased in this expo, so it will bring the people of the world together, 
and it will also give a lesson to all of the people of the world to work uh, jointly. To me, I think so, you know, because when they come together, they will understand each other, there will be a development of trust, mutual trust will be grown up and it will bring the people of the world together and it means that uh, there will be uh, a good relationships among the people of the world. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, the 20th National Congress of the Communist Party of China has just uh, recently uh, concluded. What impressed you the most uh, you know, out of this uh, important meeting? <laughs> yeah, very important question. <laughs> uh, being a student of Marx, you know, I, 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 want, uh, I love Marxism. <laughs> so how China is developing Marxism in their own way, that's what I wanted to learn even though I was in Nepal. But being in Beijing, I was very much excited and pleased to understand how this convention will go ahead. And, you know, I studied it. Uh, what, I, what I have used to say is uh, the report that uh, President Xi Jinping just gave in the 20th Congress is the development of Marxism. You know, they have used it, understood it, and it has been ex uh, you know, developed. Yeah, combined with the Chinese experience. Yeah, it is, yeah, it is a developed of Marxism. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So uh, that has given a lot of you know uh, uh, guidelines and set forth the directions where China will go in the next 30-40 uh, years. Right. Right. And uh, I think that the Chinese people will unite together to, to have these kinds of, to, to meet this goal that what uh, the report has is spoken. And uh, if China uh, you know, wants to be a more you know, socialist country, a good socialist country under the, under the philosophy of Marxism, you know, uh, it will also have a, the, it, it, it is bearing the responsibility, it is soulering the responsibility, even then it will have just to see the neighboring countries, just to make them develop. Prosper. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's so also that is one of the most important thing that I want to say. And the, and the parties who wants to have the socialism in their own country, in their respective country, uh, will, yes. will see the way how we can do it's this. An inspiration. Yeah, it will be inspirations and they can replicate it, you know, in their respective societies. And also, I'm mean, giving people the confidence that, you know, if China can do it, we can do it. Yeah, yeah. So, there will be the inconvenient. If yeah. the Chinese are also human beings, we are also human If they can do, yeah. we can do. That, that is what uh, the important message that we will have to send it. That's very interesting. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's, that's true. That yeah. is actually true. Yes, yes. Let's have a short break. We will continue our discussion right after this. There is a unique relationship. I used to say unique relationship between China and Nepal. We have the peace and tranquil relations, you know, even in the border. There is no dispute. And even though the governments will change, but the policy is not changed. Because all of, all of the political parties and the leaders gives utmost importance to the relationship with China. I think this, this kind of relation has made us uh, being two countries with one heart. Welcome back. And Mr. let's take a look at the bilateral relationship between Nepal and China. In August, uh, the foreign minister from your country and the ch his Chinese counterpart, Wang Yi, they met uh, uh, for the first time since the new government uh, was established in July last year. So how do you, you know, describe the current uh, relationship between the two countries? But, you know, for a century, for a very pretty long time, thousands of years, whatever you can say, you know, Nepal and China has a very good relationship. We are good neighbors, we are close friends, we are working in the difficulties of each other all the time, we are helping each other. So there is a, 
uh, unique relationship. I used to say unique relationship between China and Nepal. We have uh, the peace and tranquil uh, relations, you know, even in the border. There is no dispute up to now. So, uh, I think this, this kind of relation has made us uh, being two countries with one heart. You know, two countries with one heart, I used to say, because there is a good relation. Um, as I said, it is not at present, but from the very uh, past, thousands of years ago. So, uh, this kind of, you know, close relationship and a strong tie between Nepal and China has made uh, everything, you know, uh, has made us uh, to go forward with this strong relationship. And uh, at the same time, you know, as, as you said, uh, the Prime Foreign Minister, uh, our Foreign Ministers visited uh, and there was a meeting in Chindav, I was also there. Uh, our Foreign Minister Dr. Naran Kharga and uh, uh, the Foreign Minister of China, His Excellency Wang Yi, both have a very uh, good uh, uh, meeting uh, to each other and they have just uh, uh, talked about uh, the wide range of this talk that was, uh, that were between uh, Nepal and China and it has made easier, you know, the relations, uh, deepening the, or strengthening the relations even more by this uh, visit. So, I think this kinds of relations, uh, as I said, unique because uh, no other countries between two countries will have like this to me. So, it is very uh, important thing. Uh, and the relations uh, uh, with the high level budget between two countries also have strengthened, also have helped to strengthen the relations between two countries. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that the Chinese side has decided to use eight funds to conduct this feasibility study of a cross border uh, railway projects between the two countries. Uh, so, and this year, actually, China will send experts uh, to Nepal to conduct uh, uh, the survey. Uh, survey work for this project. Uh, so tell us, what does this construction of such a cross-border railway uh, mean to Nepal? Yes, <coughs> uh, as uh, in in Sindhavo, when there was a you know meeting between two uh, you know, foreign ministers, uh, Nepal and China, at that time it has been decided, and uh, Wang Yi has announced that. Uh, there will be, we will do a feasible study uh, for the railway uh, connections between Nepal and China, that is from Kerung to Kathmandu. And also, uh, he said that we will send the experts, you know, experts soon for the feasible study of uh, railway line. So, uh, you know, this, it has made a very uh, excitement to the people of Nepal. Nepal's, Nepalese people are excited hearing this announcement. And uh, it has a, you know, multiple impacts. You know, the, the, the connection of railway between Nepal and China has multiple impacts. It will increase the relations between people and people. It will develop the trade between two countries. It will open uh, by road, you know, by route or on, on route, uh, relations of China even with South Asia. And it will also uh, develop the ties that we have more stronger. Uh, if, if, if it became success to you know, just connect Nepal and China with the railway line. So, uh, when we say that the, what is the importance of connections of railway between Nepal and China, as I said, there are multiple things you know, we, have, we have to come in mind. That's why the Nepalese people are, uh, you know, being very excited hearing this announcement. And I, uh, because, you know, the, you know, the, the, the connections of railway line with Laos, in a very few months, in a short time, you know, they have been benefited a lot. Mm -hmm. 
the, the economy of Nepal will also increase by the connectivity. You know, th th this kind of connection means it has uh, multiple, you know, uh, multiple, what do you call, it's a fingers, <laughs> multiple sides. That's, it, it gives a multiple effect. So that's why this is very important for us. You know, during my tenure, I will have, this, this is a mind, this is my dream too. Uh, I will, I'm pushing it and the, uh, just asking the government of China that to send soon the experts uh, for the feasibility study uh, of uh, railway line. At the same time, uh, you know, there is also an uh, announcement of, uh, you know, energy, you know, what do we call it, uh, uh, the transmission line. The transmission line will help to increase the energy, save the energy, you know, and will also help for the development of Nepal. So you mean this uh, trans-Himalayan multi-dimensional connectivity yeah. network, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trans-Himalayan multinational uh, connectivity. Uh, that that was, uh, you know, agreed when our right honorable President Vidyadevi Bhandari has come to the forum of BRI at that time between two countries. This this was, you know, uh, there was a memorandum of understanding and that it was uh, uh, between two countries that there should be a trans Himalayan multi dimensional connectivity for uh, the development of Nepal and for. Uh, for the sake of, you know, saving energy for China also, you know, because <laughs> so there is a huge potential of hydroelectricity in Nepal. So with uh, that kind of network, you know, connectivity network, I mean, people naturally would expect there will be an increase of, say, people-to-people -people exchange and also trade between the two countries that, of course, will strengthen the relationship, you know, bring the two countries closer, probably. Yeah. So it, it, will, it will help, you know, certainly it will help and the people, you know, even now, even though there is no railway, good connections of railway, you know, most of the northern parts people who are inhabited in the Himalayan range and hilly regions, they depend for all of the things to Lhasa, Tibet, you know, even up to uh, uh, the, today they are coming to trade up to Guangzhou and other cities of China, but the route is the same. You know, they will have to go from Kerong or from Tatopani. There are two, two you know, uh, routes that from where we can carry uh, vehicles. Uh, we can carry goods from vehicles. So these, uh, Im these important uh, points, if there is a development of uh, you know, multidimensional connectivity, it will be increased. So, uh, uh, this is very important for us. Mm -hmm. This, this, this kind of uh, project is very important for yeah. us. Uh, that's right. I mean, connectivity is a key word, one of the key words mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, BRI, Belt and Road Initiative, to bring people together, bring countries together, so we can produce, actually, you know, an effect, like a one plus one is larger than two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ambassador, so... Uh, your country is going to hold a general election in November and then a new government will be formed. So uh, will that in any way impact uh, this uh, relationship between the two countries? I don't think so. <laughs> As I said earlier that there is a good relationship between Nepal and China. There is a good tie. We are good neighbors. You know? All the time so there is no dispute among us, between us, among the people and between the countries. So. Uh, uh, yes, there will be, the, there is going to be, have the election in this, this November 20, coming soon. And even though the governments will change, but the policy will not be changed. Because all of, all of the political parties and the leaders gives utmost importance to the relationship with China. Because China is our neighbor. You know? The thing is, you know, China has done so much progress, has done so prosperity, they are wishing, 
you know they have done everything according to their goals and whatever they have you know targeted uh, because they have completed the centenarian goal and the going to complete the second centenarian goal and they have plan and they are going ahead so there are lot of things nepal has to get lessons from uh, china and, and learn from china so nepal is as being one of the good neighbor of china and I'm hoping that the china has also given a good contribution done good co- contribution for the socio economic development of nepal that's why the, any any kind of government whatever they come they will have there will be no change in the foreign policy i think because nepal is a non aligned nepal believes in non alignment peaceful coexistence and pancasil you know so this is the basic principle of foreign policy of nepal and that's why even though the government will be changed but there will be no change in the foreign policy and uh, and with china especially with china as i said the all of the leaders all of the political parties gives utmost importance for this relation so i think there will be no change thank you ambassador <laughs> thank you thank you for your thank time you. yeah <laughs>